As usual, the mail bag became a little too long. This is why I divided it into two parts. Because I did not plan a video for next Sunday, you will get the second part as a bonus video. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. Here we have our first packet, quite big. Let's open it up. Here there is a smaller one. Let's look what's inside. Oh, nice. A little Arduino. <laughs> Nicely made. With everything needed, plus a very modern USB-C connector. Now, the first question, of course, is is this just a gimmick or does it work? Let's plug it in. Uh -huh. Ah, the blinky sketch works. So this is already preloaded. Now this is not a cheap thing. In the end it costed me 45 Swiss francs, which is close to 50 dollars. But I wanted to have this small gimmick. It is a limited edition and because my channel depends a lot on the Arduino or the roots of the channel is the Arduino, I decided to get one of those as a memory for my lab. And it can be programmed. I just changed the sketch and you see now the blinky is different. Nice little gadget, will probably never be used but it's a nice memory. The next one is also from Arduino but this time from Arduino Pro which is a new division of the Arduino company and it is called Nikola Sends Me. I got it free of charge from Bosch and it is a quite small sensor module and very much populated both sides. The interesting thing is it does not contain only sensors, it also contains a NRF52 microprocessor. So it's a complete board. It contains a motion sensor, a magnetometer, a pressure sensor and a gas sensor, all from Bosch Electronic. The price is really not cheap, it's $59, but if you need these kind of sensors then it is probably okay. This is a full-blown computer board with many sensors and because Arduino or Bosch wrote a library, we can use the sensors in innovative ways, as we will see later in the examples. In the getting started, you have a few different examples and all are based on this library, which is available in the Arduino IDE. The most interesting example here is this one, which has some, as they call, artificial intelligence. It can distinguish between walking, running, on bicycle, in vehicle and tilting. So a few activities and this is interesting because this needs a lot of compute power and probably also a lot of uh, knowledge and we can just profit from that by reading these numbers here. Unfortunately, the example here, which is very simple, just one, more or less one line, activity.getActivity, that's, that's all. And, but unfortunately, this example does not yet work. So an interesting new device. Maybe we will get other sensors, more intelligent sensors. 
The buzzword here is AI on the edge. And we see here an interesting thing, a description, as mentioned in my last video, very long, but only warnings and stuff like that, nothing important. Maybe you will see it once in a video. For the moment I have no idea to use it, but I will definitely check if this example will work later on and also check if it really can detect these kind of activities. We all know these ultrasonic transducers and we also know that they work around 40 kilohertz. Here I have a different bunch of transmitters and also receivers, but they do not work on 40 kilohertz, they work on 25 kilohertz. I ordered them for an experiment and I will not tell you what experiment, you probably can google it and find it out what I want to do, but I do not want to do it only with these transmitters. I have a bigger one. Now this is also for 25 kilohertz and not 40 kilohertz and they are used for cleaners, ultrasonic cleaners in general and they need quite some power. They are also very heavy and because they need a lot of power I ordered a driver for them and like that I hope I will be able to create quite some ultrasonic noise. Now fortunately I'm old already and do not hear a lot on these frequencies so uh, I do not need to pay attention and we have no dog so also there it uh, is not a big problem I assume but we will see. 40 kilohertz of course is much further away from our hearing frequencies but 25 kilohertz should also be okay. So stay tuned for a video with these components. The listing of the amplifier is this one. It comes with one small transducer, but this one is bigger of course. So as usual, bigger is better. It costs, if ordered in China, 41 US dollars plus 668 dollars shipping. The 100 watt transducer costs $25 free shipping or the 60 one is, is $20. And 20 of the small ones are $12, 50 also free shipping. The next one is a USB tester, but it is not a ordinary one like the one I had before. The difference is mainly the connectors, USB-C and USB-A. And on the other side the same of course. This is a trusty device, I use it uh, all the time in my lab and now with the new USB-C connectors this became more and more important. And it is even more important than this one. This one usually we knew that it's 5 volts and we were interested in, for example, the power or current. But with USB-C you cannot have only 5 volts, you can have 9 volts, 12 volts, 15 or 20 volts. And this device shows all these kind of things. You have also much more possibilities here. You can switch also voltage on the outside and stuff like that. And there is another interesting thing, this one is bidirectional. So let's check if this is true. Yes, it is, it works. This way around. We see it has 5 volts, this is the normal compatibility mode and it consumes already 22 milliampere. So the whole device consumes 22 milliampere. Now, uh, we, of course, we have a nice device to test this. 
our Arduino Mini and this has an USB connection so we connect it we heard the data lines work uh, now it consumes 95 milliampere minus 22 which is roughly 670 milliamperes for the Arduino now let's check it out in the real domain with a USB-C connector and a USB-C power delivery power supply which is capable to deliver much more voltage than just 5 volt. I use this small adapter here which has a USB-C connector and this one can be used to charge my Microsoft Surface laptop or notebook. If I connect it to the charger port we see the power is on and if we go closer we see that it delivers now 15 volt plus 1.65 ampere which is roughly 25 watts which is probably all my surface can take and if I connect the Arduino it goes back to 5 volts. This is all part of the PD protocol uh, and this seems to be quite a safe thing that we do not fry 5 volt devices but still can charge 20 volt laptops for example. This USB-C monitor is called TC66 and it costs with free shipping from China $80.28. The simple one um, the more expensive one is with Bluetooth. I don't need this, so uh, I did not order the C. The C costs $22.96. I usually only want to read uh, stuff on, on the display and do not need Bluetooth. This Microsoft Surface adapter, by the way, costs $2 something plus $1.23 shipping. It's quite an interesting thing because then you can standardize on your travel adapter on a USB-C adapter and do not need to have a special charger for the laptop. If you deal with RF, you probably know the Adam Pluto or you even own one. This is an SDR transceiver which has a transmitter and a receiver and it works from a few megahertz up to six gigahertz if you pimp it. A very interesting device with a USB connector to connect it to your PC. With the appropriate software you can listen to all kind of different sensors, radio stations, you name it. Airplanes, everything can be listened to and you can do also experiments with a TX. Here you have to pay attention, this is only for licensed uh, people. Anyway, this Adam Pluto was quite cheap. It was about $130, $150, including shipping from Mauser, for example. But recently the prices went up like hell and it's now much more than $200. This is when I discovered this device here. It's called Pluto Plus and the biggest difference is it has four connectors, not only two, because it has two transmitters and two receivers. Now this is for me not the most important thing. The most important thing is that it has a built-in Ethernet connection for my satellite ground station. I will use this Pluto Plus and want to connect it with Ethernet instead of USB. USB was never very reliable. In my case, uh, across the 25 meters, the distance I have between the ground station and my uh, radio room. The interesting thing with this Pluto Plus is not that it is better equipped. It has also a metal case, for example, but the price is not much, much more expensive than the original Pluto from Mauser. So this is uh, can be an interesting alternative 
I read some tests and it seems to be pretty much the same as the original Pluto. It, were, it runs also with the same software. This is not a cheap device, but the possibilities of this new SDR technology is mind-boggling. Another interesting catch is this small device with this SMD part and this is a filter for 403 megahertz. Now you can ask yourself why the hell would I need a filter for 403 megahertz? Maybe you saw my video about weather balloon hunting. I leave a link in the description to this video and these weather balloons usually work on 401 to 406 megahertz. And if you insert such a filter between the antenna and your receiver, then the sensitivity of, the, of your receiver is higher. My receiver is slightly different than many others. It is a Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Pi is connected to a USB hub and three SDR dongles here. They are similar to this one. They have no transmitter, they have only one receiver there and they are much, much cheaper. They cost around $10 or at least when I bought them. But they have much less bandwidth, only two megahertz. That is why we need three of them to catch all the different balloons. And now I have a power splitter and here I connect a amplifier and before the amplifier this filter and the antenna here. So we will have a antenna, a filter, the amplifier, the splitter which makes three signals of one and here the three receivers connected to a Raspberry Pi. You get these filters for example also for 433 megahertz. They can solve your problems if your receiving for your sensors is not reliable. Then I would suggest to insert such a 433 megahertz filter between the antenna and your receiver. An amplifier is not needed in the 433 megahertz scenario because you only connect it to one receiver and it has nearly no loss in the passband. Here is the listing. The 403 megahertz version costs $8.20 plus $1.42 shipping. The 433 megahertz version costs $4 plus $4 shipping, so similar price. This concludes part one. I hope it was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.